In this video, we solve problem 10.2.22 from Essentials of Statistics 6th edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says the data shows, or the data show, the bug chirps per minute at different temperatures. We're asked to find the regression equation, letting the first variable be the independent variable x, and find the best predicted temperature for a time when a bug is chirping at a rate of 3,000 chirps per minute. We're asked to use a significance level of alpha equals 0.05, and then we're asked what is wrong with this predicted value. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six ordered pairs, so n is equal to six. And we're asked initially just to find the regression equation. I think I will use Excel to do the calculations in this video, and you'll see that it's very easy um, to compute both b sub zero and b sub one. I'm using a couple of the formulas that we talked about before um, and again using Excel to do those calculations. So I will share my paper with you. So y hat is equal to b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x and there are a couple of different formulas that we could use but I think that if we're using technology the easiest ones to use are these two formulas. So we can find the Pearson correlation coefficient R um, for our data, and then we'll find the sample standard deviation for the Y values and the sample standard deviation for the X values using Excel. And then we'll use this formula to compute our um, slope here. And then for B sub zero, we just need to take the sample mean of the Y's and subtract the B sub one that we just calculated times the sample mean of the X's. Again, all of these quantities are the two sample standard deviations, x bar and y bar, are easy to compute with built-in functions in Excel. So to compute all of those quantities, I will click here and then click open in Excel. After opening the Excel spreadsheet, this is what I see and I want to first compute the sample standard deviations. So I type equals in this cell, and then stdev.s for sample standard deviation, open parentheses, and then highlight the cells for my x values. And then we'll just drag and drop to get the sample standard deviation for our y values. And then to compute the linear correlation coefficient, we'll type equals Pearson, open parentheses, and then it wants an array for the first variable, those are our x values, and then you type a comma, and then an array for our second variable. So you highlight the y values, close parentheses, and that gives you the r value. And then we need the sample means for both um, the x values and the y values. The built-in function for that is average. So we'll type equals average, open parentheses, and then we'll select the x values, and then drag and drop. And to find b sub 1, that's our slope, we type equals, then select the r value, then multiply by the sample standard deviation, deviation for the y values divided by the sample standard deviation for the x values. Oops, I don't know why I put this differential equations book here. I guess I was just trying to make sure my paper didn't fly away. Okay, so that's my b sub 1. And b sub zero, that is my y-intercept. That is y bar. So our, our mean for the y's minus b sub one times x bar. And so we have those two values. Now I'm not sure um, what my lab statistics wants. So we should go back to my lab statistics and see what the fine print looks like. They want us to round the x coefficient to four decimal places and the um, constant to two decimal places. So the x coefficient is this b sub one. So y hat will equal um, b sub one, which is 0 0.0497 when I round to two decimal or four decimal places times x plus b sub zero, and they want us to round that to two decimal places. So that's 29.59. So 
that's my answer. I'm just going to type that into my lab statistics now. And they have the constant term first. So we type 29.59. And then they have the coefficient of x, 0 0.0497. And then we'll click check answer. See, very easy. Then we're asked for the best predicted temperature for a time when a bug is chirping at a rate of 3,000 chirps per minute. Well, that depends entirely on whether we have um, evidence of a correlation. So we need to take our R value and consider the alpha value that we have and the sample size that we have to find the critical values and then compare the absolute value of R to the absolute value of the critical values. So to do that, I'm going to come back over here to um, my Excel spreadsheet and then we'll look at our R value. So when I go to Excel, I see that this is my R value. So if we round to three decimal places, R is approximately 0 0.917. And we see we have one, two, three, four, five, six ordered pairs. So N is equal to six. And they asked us to use a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05. So we're gonna use the sample size and the alpha value to find the corresponding critical values of R. Since we're looking for evidence of a correlation, we're gonna have two critical values. Um, the null hypothesis is that rho is not equal to zero. So we have a critical value on the left and another one on the right. There are a list, or there is a list of critical values of R in um, my lab statistics. So let's use that one this time. If we were taking an exam over this material, we would use um, table A6 from the Triola formulas and tables. Now, when I came back to this problem statement, I noticed that that table wasn't available for 10.2.22. That means we have to refer to the table A6 that I had mentioned. So let's do that. And we have n equals 6, and the alpha equals 0 0.05. So we go to the row for n equals 6, and the column for alpha equals 0 0.05. And then we see the positive value of that critical value of r. So the critical values are plus and minus 0 0.811 in this case. Um, so that means if I am graphing this on a number line for our values between negative one and one, my critical values are at negative uh, 0.811 and positive 0.811. This R value is closer to one than our critical value of 0.811 is. So our actual R value for our sample is in this region. Remember, if it's in the tails, we're going to reject that null hypothesis, which means we have evidence of a correlation. So we'll say, since the absolute value of R is greater than the absolute value of R critical, because remember rho equals zero is in the middle there, we reject the null, which in this case means we have sufficient evidence of a correlation. Okay, if we have sufficient evidence of a correlation, that means it makes sense to use this to predict our Y value. If X is 3000, we'll just substitute that in here and find the best predicted value of Y.
and I'll use my calculator for this. And we get 78 point or 178.69 approximately. And we may need to round that to a different number of decimal places. So let's see what they want on my lab statistics. Okay, so the fine print here tells us to round to one decimal place as needed. So I'm going to round that to 178.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Great. Okay, and then it says, what is wrong with this predicted value? Choose the correct answer below. Well, look at all the number of chirps per minute that we have. We've got 810, 907, about 1100, about 900, about 800, about 1100. This X value of 3000 chirps per minute is so much higher than all the X values over here. We're really extrapolating. We're assuming that this pattern that holds for the X values between 800 and about 1100 is going to continue to hold all the way up to X equals 3000. And that might not be true. It may not um, be accurate. <laughs> So let's see, um, when they ask what's wrong with this predicted value, it says, A says it's, it is unrealistically high. The value is 3000 is far outside the range of observed values. So that's, that's our answer. <laughs>